Hello, I hope you are all doing very well. As you can see, we have a guest joining us today, although she was not invited onto the show. Um, Pastor Heath Jones from Northwood Christian Church, um, making week three of the coronavirus tapes, which is again, not what I'm gonna call them. Get out of here. Um, I hope you're doing well. I've been surprised and encouraged by your feedback and the number of people that seem to be watching these videos. Um, that's great. Josie. Get out of here, for real. She's wearing her ballet uh, uniform because she misses ballet. I think we all miss a lot of things in these times. Um, as I was saying, uh, appreciate your feedback and um, the suggestions and the kind things that you've said. It seems that these videos are reaching more people than I expected, but also are um, being very fairly well received. But if you have comments or suggestions or critiques, ways that can make it better, please um, write in. Uh, my email is heath, H-E-A-T-H, at indy, I-N-D-Y, N-C-C, dot org. It'd be great to hear from you. Um, few questions that I've been getting from congregants. One has been about our Easter service. Uh, first off, we're not meeting in person. I think that should be fairly obvious for most pe people, um, but no, we're not meeting in the foreseeable future. Uh, but I'm going to set up a way for us to connect digitally, online, a, a live service that you can stream and view and listen to. And for those in our congregation who are technologically um, challenged, I'll say, or have don't have maybe the, the, the proper computer or listening device, um, there will be an option for you to phone in and listen through your landline even, if you like. And we'll be even taking communion digitally on Easter Sunday, and I'm looking forward to that. And so you'll be hearing more from me about that. And I, yes, I've resigned myself to my role as tech support as well as pastor in these times. I expect uh, long conversations um, with congregants to help walk them through the steps that they'll need to take to be able to connect with us in that way on Easter morning with perhaps a trial run on Good Friday. Let's get out of here. Another question that we've been having is uh, sustained giving on uh, to Northwood. How can I continue to support my church and its food pantry and the other things that are um, important to you? Uh, many of you have continued to mail in your your ch um, charitable donations by, uh, by the mail. Um, our address is 4550 Central Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, area code 46205, and you feel free to mail in your checks. But if you're looking for more uh, direct ways and, and ways that um, are in better keeping with the self, the, with the um, stay at home orders that we are all living through, um, call your bank and see if there's a way of setting up a, a, a way of digital transfer directly to Northwood or um, Maybe you'll have to send in a, a voided check so we can set things up on our end for that. I uh, was planning to show you how I give through an app called Givelify. It's a charitable donation app and there are others as well, but it's kind of a one tap give giving service where you can um, set it up and pick the charitable donation you're wanting to give to. It's linked to your bank account. It's a small fee, but not so substantial that I don't, um, that I don't use it. And you can mail, send it in straight um, in that way. And um, I plan to do it for you live to show you how it works, except for the device that I use to do that, I'm looking into right now recording this, and so I am unable to do that. You see this girl right here, her, her dreams and aspirations are, are set by YouTube kid stars, and so she's trying to get her foot in the game by bombarding her father's video. I don't know if it'll work. Anyhow. The app is called Givelify, and um, you can, of course, set up that way as well. You see the balloons around. We celebrated our uh, now two-year-old's birthday, Abel, uh, just uh, two days ago, maybe three. It's hard to keep track these days, isn't it? Which leads me to the next thing I want to say, which is how are you doing, really? I gave my email earlier. Uh, I'd love to hear from you if you are feeling isolated, alone, depressed, or happy, and you have something joyful you'd like to share. That would be also great to hear, and I can maybe share it with um, the folks who are watching this video and, and the next one that I make. Um, 
but I'd love to hear from you. I, I've talked to people who are feeling pretty okay. I've talked to people who are feeling very anxious and concerned and afraid. I have felt all of those things. And so I share, I join you in many of the emotions that you're, um, you're experiencing. I've even um, read pretty, pretty touching accounts of people who are alone in their addictions right now, their support network taken away in a time where they desperately need points of contact, like a regular place of work to show up to, or a regular a counseling session with a, a, somebody who carries them through that. And so people are going through a variety of uh, tough situations, and that, if we can be of help, I would love to hear uh, more about that. Today's scripture reading is from the 37th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, verses 1 through 14. And it reads, The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, oh, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded and the breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your eyes and bring you up from the graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act. Pastors who follow the lectionary, as I often do, were sure handed a gift this week when they chose this passage from the Hebrew Bible. Of course, they could not have had our times in mind when they did that. Um, they could not have foreseen this pandemic coming, but there are a few scenes that paint so stark and hopeless a picture as a valley of dry, lifeless bones. It captures in a moment a panoramic view of what could come on the other side of suffering, what may come on the other side of suffering we fear annihilation, the cessation of all that we know and love, even ourselves. When you are nothing but bones, you are no more. A memory, maybe. But what if everyone forgets? Step back, breathe while you can. It's too much to take in sometimes, except you can't help it. Every day I wake up, I roll over, I pick up my phone, and I read the new numbers. Hundreds and hundreds, soon to be thousands 
and thousands of new cases just in Indiana in the death toll. And I can't help but imagine into that statistic the ones that I love or you too. And the dry bones pile up and they become all I can see sometimes in my mind's eye. Well, I guess not all the time, and that's good. My kids are simply loving these times. They have seldom had so much one-on-one -on -one time with their dad, but let's face it, it's mom they really want, even now, which is fine. That's just the way it almost always is, but I can sit back and watch them, and when I do, I remember, even now, that not all is dry bones. My kids are flesh and blood, slobber and snot, this week they were all balloons and birthday cake as we celebrated my two-year-old's birthday. They have substance. They are alive. They have breath. We don't need the prophet to summon it. It's there. When we live on the edge of the valley, we fear. When we're very near the valley of the shadow of death, even whilst, whilst there is life around us, we fear, so in these times we do well to attend to the life that is around us. One of the things that I've enjoyed about making these videos is the feedback. And many of you, as I said earlier, have written in or even called me and told me some things um, that made me feel happy, how grateful they were, how some of their relatives are enjoying them and their friends. Um, some of you have even sent me material to include, and so, a shout out to one of our congregants, Amy Harwell. On Monday, she sent me a portion of her Lenten devotion. She took a picture of it and sent it in and asked me if I might include it in this week's reflection. And I thought in my mind, well, it depends on what it says. Uh, but this devotion had a very simple ask in the midst of the Valley of the Shadow, in the midst of the Valley of Dry Bones. It said, call up someone you know, maybe your pastor or friend and Go and walk among the trees. And what's your objective? Notice them, the life that's in them. Well, I couldn't call up a friend, or we should not be calling up friends to go on walks who are outside of our circles uh, of isolation in these times. But I went out myself, and um, I tried to notice the trees. And I learned well, I guess I rediscovered something that is intuitive and I already knew. There's more life to those trees than meets the eye. I noticed them, the life there. By them, I mean the bugs that I saw crawling on the tree, the squirrel that barked at me and shook its tail, wondering what are you standing around my doorstep for? The birds that are singing in the trees above me. I put my hands on the tree and I imagined what lay down below, the roots sucking life from the ground in this cycle of nourishment. I thought of the worms that are very likely lying just beneath life, life. Maybe even a snake, but still life. That squirrel, I looked up at it at one point and I thought that probably is a wild animal. It's wondering if I, an intruder, am going to lead it to the Valley of Dry Bones. And I said, friend, not a chance. I love you. Funny thing to say to a squirrel, but the sort of thing that you might say if you're noticing the life that is there for the first time in a long time. All this to say, we must do all that we can in these times to stave off the valley of dry bones. But soon we will find that we cannot keep it at bay completely. That is the reality. What we want to know then is, now what? Now that the bones are there, now that we are in the valley of the shadow, can these bones live? When we find ourselves in that place, when a community finds itself in that place, when a nation, when a planet finds itself in that place, the question, can these bones live, 
becomes the question. The prophet heard the words, thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. What if it were true? I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. If this is true, we're about to see funny things happen. We'll see communities stitch themselves fast back together and there is a great hope in the air that our communities will be stronger, more closely bound in love than they were before. We'll see new bodies come together, new friendships, closer friendships, more generosity, more compassion. This is what I see in those dry bones. I see gratitude welling up, as it is already now doing. Gratitude for what treasures we have, since discovered were just under our noses. But we cannot see them because of the frenetic culture that would not allow us to breathe. I, for one, have loved how these times have drawn me closer to my Northwood family. I've spent more time talking to some of you than I have yet in the two years that I've been here. And there's something even more astounding. I think I've called my mother and father every day Maybe you missed one day since this began, and in the past, I might give them a call once or twice a month out of the blue. Uh, but family bodies, so tighter together, there's life growing in these times. But the question remains, what about the bones? The death, the sorrow, the despair. The dry bones are bound to present themselves, and we will want to to know what life is left for them. This passage, if you can have the courage to, to take it, calls us to a radical hope. The bones live in memory. They live in the mind and presence of God. They are kept there for us until the time we join them in our own sleep. In two weeks, we'll celebrate Easter each in our own fashion. And Christians all over the globe will wonder in amazement at the life that finds us on the other side of an execution, a death, and an empty tomb. It is our hope that the life that finds us on Easter morning is for everyone. This means that there is hope for the dry bones Ezekiel finds in the valley and the dry dead bones we find in our own lives, or to quote one of my favorite singers, Aaron Weiss of the band Me Without You, there's hope for Job like a cut down tree. Only wish that there were the same hope for me. Something like that. In other words, even a stump might sprout new branches and grow into shapes we never imagined. If you are wondering about the valley of death splayed out before you, hold on to these words. I think they carry ancient, deep, and profound wisdom and truth. Hope for a cut down tree, hope in the valley of the shadow, for life to come in surprising and astounding and astonishing ways. So gather up and keep your dry bones, there is hope for them yet. There is hope for you, even you who are desperate for hope in life on the other side of this dark valley. I'd like to conclude by sharing with you something that I hope makes you feel a little better. It's a poster that my daughter made along with my wife. We were had a big piece of paper dropped off on our porch with instructions to put a hopeful message on it, however we wanted to paint it on and then display it on our front porch so that our neighbors can see some of what we hope for them as a way of bringing a little more light into the world. And so I leave you with that. I love you. Take care of yourself. If you need me, 
reach out. And God bless.